I've got to be the calm influence and know that everybody else will become more calm if I am. Yeah, you're exactly you know, never, right. Yeah, I've never, you know, never seen it in that light before. And another word to throw in there that's even more important is the word purpose. So, but you know, like, like what you just said, everything you said was just, well, you know, it's exactly what I've been thinking, but it's, you know, it's hard if you're not, like if you're thinking it, but no one else and there's, is like... <laughs> Good job. Yeah. Yo, what up, guys? It's Gary Vee, and it's time for the daily bread. Give us our daily bread. I want the whole basket. Cause I'm a hustle till I get it, or I'm in a casket. Passionate for providing value in every way. Not cashing in for providing value every day. Paying it forward. Right thing, I'll do it till I'm dead. I hope you're hungry, cause it's time for the daily bread. What's up, guys? So to give you a little bit of an idea of what's going on today, I'm glad to be in Greenville on a Thursday. It feels very strange. I usually am only in Greenville, uh, which is where I live on Fridays. So I've been kind of thrown off uh, all morning and afternoon. Um, but a bunch of meetings today. Uh, the cool thing is I, I got to go, number one, I slept in this morning till 9 a.m. Um, so I was able to, I didn't sleep till 9 a.m., but I was able to just kind of lay in bed. Our daughter was um, sleeping longer than normal, so I just kind of lay there with my wife and talk and chat, and like to be able to do that on a Thursday uh, was very, very odd, but very, very cool, and so I was just glad I had, was able to have that time with her. Um, then was able to go to a meeting with her for the new business that she's starting. Um, we were able to look at the space that she's gonna be moving into and do some planning there. Um, came here to the office. We had one of our company meetings that we do uh, every month, uh, just constantly building the culture here within our company. We are, we're always reading a book uh, that we go over and then we're all bringing ideas um, and, and action plans for those ideas to how to improve the bottom line of the company. Uh, I think it's something really cool that our company does. Um, after that, we did a Facebook Live Q&A that you're gonna see that it blew me away and it really solidified in my mind the fact that like we've got to start do, doing more live but we've got to start doing more live Q&A because that's the best way that we can really get you the information when you want when you can just literally ask for it. Um, I was blown away by these conversations we had with people. It really made an impact on me. Um, just hearing like how someone from the UK stumbled across, across the content, how um, someone from New Hampshire came across the content and knowing that this money that we're putting in and running these ads and trying to build this thing is making a difference. And, and, it's, and it's making an impact. And that was what we wanted to do from day one. And it's so cool to see that play out. Um, in real time in a live Q&A. So uh, I hope you enjoy uh, the content today and then I hope you have an incredible weekend. What is up guys? So we are live now on my Facebook page. We are live on Motivation King's Facebook page, live on my Instagram page. We're live on the vlog, not really we're recording for the vlog. So here's the thing, here's what we're gonna do. Let me kind of lay the framework out. And while I'm doing that guys, if you have any questions, go ahead and comment with your question below. This question can be about anything. It can be about business. It can be about sales. It can be about um, how many push-ups can TJ do consecutively. It can be about what did I have for breakfast this morning. I don't really care. It really doesn't matter. This is for you guys. And we wanted to uh, do this more often where we really just create a platform where you can get what you need. And that is a question answered um, rather than having to pilfer through tons and tons of content to hopefully find an answer. We can either provide that answer for you or point you in the right direction to it. I'm, um, I am very upfront in saying that if I don't know the answer to somebody's question, I am not going to try to sit here and BS that and tell you something just to, just to talk and hear myself speak. Uh, I will say I do not know, but you know who does know? I bet Jonathan Parker knows who's coming by the office later this afternoon. And you know what I do? I'll connect you with him and he can probably get that answer uh, for you. So um, beyond that, what I want you guys to do questions go in the comments and then we're going to dm you or private message you whatever platform you're on and we're going to ask for your phone number 
And those of you that want to be on live, we're going to actually bring people on the phone here uh, with all of this technology we're running in this room right now. And in doing that, you're probably going to get on the Daily Bread vlog as well. So you're not going to, only going to be on the Sales Wolves podcast. You're not only going to be on Motivation King's Facebook page, which, by the way, has almost a million likes on that page and is viewed by a ton of people, but you're also going to be on the Daily Bread vlog because we're going to use this content uh, for an episode. So uh, this is really cool stuff. Feel free to plug whatever you want to plug. You know, this is not about me monetizing anything. In monetizing anything. This is for you to have a platform uh, to do what you need to do. So with that, you want to go to the first. We're going to call James. We're going to call James. This is James. I am from Lake Oconee, Georgia. Lake Oconee, Georgia. Nice. Well, very cool, man. Well, what was the question that you had that you posted on Facebook? My biggest question with success in sales right now is how in the world do you find competent, quality salespeople? How do you weed them out? How do you get them? Because I fired three in the last six months. That's a great question. That's a great question. And I certainly understand the, uh, the frustration with that. You know, one thing that I've found kind of holds people back from that is this idea of hiring eight people. Like we need eight salespeople. We need eight people out there crushing it. We need eight people doing this and that is just yeah. focusing on we need one. Like we need one killer salesperson to come on board. Let's find the one. And then from that one, you can kind of create all your systems around um, how you found that person, how you got them trained, how you got them out in the field, and how you got them you know, making some money. And now use them as kind of a success story to find the second and then the third. I think a lot of people can look at the situation as a whole and the fact that we need a sales team and forget that before they have a sales team, they need a salesperson. <laughs> hey, man, I appreciate you and hope you have a good rest of your day, man. Hey, what's up, man? This is Tyler Harris. No freaking way. What's yes, that, freaking way. How are you, man? Good, dude. How you been? I am doing well. Where, uh, where are you located? I'm in San Jose, California. Oh, that's awesome. So uh, my question is... Uh, what do you do to stay calm and collect and like on point when uh, an emergency situation comes up onto you? What type of emergency are you talking about? Because there's a big difference between like a family emergency and like a business emergency. Correct. So like a business emergency okay. um, or like a, you know, or a job related emergency. Yeah. So like for me last Friday, I worked in construction. Okay. And uh, we're, before I even get there at 5.30 in the morning, I get a phone call from one of my electricians. And he calls me up. He's like, hey, dude, we hit a sprinkler line, right? And we're, yeah. you know, water's going everywhere. Important thing. Okay, you've got a leak that's coming. Water's going everywhere. Okay, where, where's the source of the leak? And let's fix that first. Because until the water yeah. stops, then we can't deal right. with all the damage that the water's creating. And, man, exactly. just as I'm saying that out loud, that's like the greatest metaphor for, like, life in any exactly. situation like it's any universal situation. yeah it's completely universal situation. so you're talking about literally water leaking but in somebody's life they're talking about a, a, a problem with a relationship or they're talking about a problem in the workplace and and it's figuring out where that hot button like where is that issue and until we fix that and get the water from <laughs> from flowing then we can't even yep. talk about the damage that's being caused by it um so i think right. i think attacking the source uh, of the problem. Uh, but then man, it's mm -hmm. just, it's just, like I said, like knowing that, okay, I'm going to go in a, in a situation that's chaotic and I've got to be the calm influence and know that everybody else will become more calm if I am. And just yeah, being a leader, exactly. just being a leader. Yep. Yeah, man. That's a great question. Right on, I really appreciate you uh, calling in and definitely let's uh, stay connected and, um, and all on either a DM or, or private message on Facebook, man. Hope you have a good rest of your uh, Thursday. Awesome. I appreciate it. Yeah. Hey, take care, Tyler. Absolutely. TJ, see you later, buddy. <laughs> I'll tell him. He just walked out, but I'll tell him. Hello. Hey, is this Dean? It is, yes. Hey, Dean, this is Tyler Harris. How are you, my friend? I'm good, brother. How are you? I'm doing well. Where are where are you uh, located? I see in the UK. Is that right? Yeah, the UK, Greater Manchester, England. Incredible, man. How are you today? <laughs> I'm awesome. Yeah, I'm, I'm great. Well, good. Hey, how did you happen to stumble upon my content? 
Well, I follow you on Facebook, and yeah. um, when I when I have the time to watch you, I do, or I read, I read the comments and the posts that you post, and I read them, and a lot of it I, I consent to, but. Um, there's just frustrations that, that hit me, and I know if they hit me, yeah. they hit the majority of people. The average Joe, you know, um, yeah. who, who isn't, let's just say, well off in life, hasn't got the education, has made bad choices, has realized later on in life, midlife, you know, you need to pull your socks up. You re and you, you start watching the Facebook and people like yourself, and you think, this is great, but. I'm at a place now where if I, if I knew that 10, 15, 20 years ago, I'd be a lot better off than what I am now. And I think with maturity kicking in with age and you, you know, you, you know, you have to make good choices. And you, when you want to make good choices, you, you're be best will in the world. But if you know, you just not got those steps that that foundation to lean on, you just kind of think, what's the point? It's hopeless. So when I'm, um, contacting you now, I just need to know um, where would you begin if if if, if the hustle had to be hard? Yeah, and I believe I believe hustling is hard. Where where would you begin if you were rock bottom with the restraints of uh, a nine to five, a forty fifty hour week, um, set income, um, no education, um, time time taken, family responsibilities you just find that you've only got like an hour or two to yourself each day where under the barrel where where do you where would you begin to kind of uh, make that step to come to come up out from underneath the barrel and and into the heights of, of the life you know that you portray as being possible and available for people to live man that, that's such an incredible and an, uh, an important question i'm going to repeat a little bit of it but everybody that's watching on Instagram right now, just if you can go over to my Facebook page, you'll be able to hear these questions live. It'll be way easier. Uh, but basically, Dean's wanted to know, where do you start? If you feel like you're at rock bottom, or if you feel you're just in a situation where you feel stuck, you've got a nine to five, you're, you're stuck at a fixed income, you only have a minimal amount of time a day, um, you have a, a certain set as far as, skill set and education you know where do you where do you start from to, to to start hustling and to start building these things that you see other people doing and man i'm incredibly empathetic to that question because that was exactly what i kept asking myself over and over and over and over three and a half years ago and the interesting thing is like as i say that out loud i can hear someone or I can envision someone hearing me say that and they're like oh here we go you know here we go another guy that's going to say he 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 was saying that three and a half years ago but like no like I really I was like I can remember laying in bed yeah. crying and talking to my wife and and being like I don't know what to do like and her being like, well, you've got to figure it out. And I'm like, I'm aware. Like, I've got to figure something out. Like, I, but I don't yeah. know what to do. I don't know what to do. I don't, like, I had a hard work ethic, but I was trying, I couldn't find something to plug that hard work ethic into that would generate mm -hmm. what I was looking to generate. And yeah. so, like, I literally was there three and a half years. But what I found was that opportunity was never, ever, ever going to come while I was still just sitting around waiting. And so the job that I had at the time and then the job that I went into, like, you can't, you can't be living this mediocre life of putting in half effort where you are now, even if you hate it. Like, even if you hate your job 100%. I promise you, you'll mm. find a better one and you'll find the one that was meant for you if you excel in what you hate <laughs> rather than yeah. rather than so many people that just say, oh, well, you know, once the greatest opportunity arises or once I figure out what I was meant to do or once this opportunity of a lifetime comes, then I'll go all in. Yeah, I, yeah. that's and that's what I was doing. I was just waiting and looking, but I wasn't going all in on where I was currently. And so that's the, that's the biggest piece of advice that I, that I would give is that opportunities will arise when you're excelling where you're at. 
And yeah. And if you become the absolute best in what you're currently doing, that's when those other opportunities from relationships or people hearing about you or people just seeing you in action and saying, man, there's something different about that guy. Like, you know, he may not like what he's doing, but like he shows up and he just absolutely gets after it. And then that'll come up in a random conversation. Then you'll have these things that just all of a sudden start happening. Um, a lot of people call that the law of attraction. That's what I would refer to it as, but it's just, it's all based on your intent. Like if you're going 100% all in just hard at what you're currently doing, even if what you're currently doing is something that you hate, it will always bring about something that will lead to the next big thing. Not trying and not going all in, not going 100% will never lead to the next big thing. It'll always just lead to the next area where you're not satisfied. Um, yeah. But man, as far as your education and like in background, like you're doing it, like like listening and watching stuff online. Like, I mean, anyone with the internet has access to in, an infinite amount of education and information. And for me, that was a huge part of watching videos and, and just learning from people that were out doing it. Um, I mean, that's, that's all I did. Yeah, and that's all I still do is just watch other people's content um, and just learn from these people that I considered mentors of mine that I have never met in my entire life. <laughs> you know? Um, yeah. Does that, does that answer your question at all? It, it does. But where would you, would you aim for passion or would you aim for what I would, not. would be the most lucrative for you? So he asked if, we, if, you, if I would aim for passion. I would not aim for passion. I think there's a really important distinction there. And I've talked about this a few times. I believe it was CJ, um, a guy named CJ. He he's, uh, does the business development for Eric Thomas, uh, ET, the hip hop preacher. And he said it at an event I went to one time. He said, are you chasing hustle? Or are you chasing, and then I thought he was going to say passion, like are you chasing passion? But he said, are, are you chasing your gifts? And so the importance right. is chasing your gifts, not your passion, because you can become passionate about something or you can lose passion in something. No different from a relationship to a job or a career. But your gifts are your gifts. And, and looking at what you're actually talented, in, like what are those things that you can do easily that other people it takes them forever to do or those things that you can spend a ton of time on and it feels like minutes went by that other people dread doing and those are the things that you were born with um so mm -hmm. i would chase those things and find out where those could lead rather than you know i'm super passionate about football okay yeah. okay great like do you have any talent no well but i'm passionate about it okay great well you can become passionate about anything and so that's you know, when you're when you're going all in on the thing that you were actually like the skill and talent and ability that you were actually born with, um, to me there's something special that happens there. Um, a lot of people like call that congruence. Um, but when you're operating out of those natural skills and abilities, you will become passionate uh, in that situation. So I wouldn't I wouldn't necessarily chase uh, after passion. I would just start finding things that you just happen to be good at. Um, you certainly want to enjoy them, uh, but I don't think that necessarily, like, for example, I sell life insurance. I'm not passionate about selling life insurance at, at all. I can tell mm -hmm. people I am, and it's a lie. Like, yeah. no, one, no one's passionate about sitting down across the table from someone and saying, hey, when you die, here's what's going to happen. Let's figure that out. No one wants to have those conversations. Um, but I'm extremely passionate about this phone call I may be able to have with you and that the only reason I'm able to have that is because of the life insurance policies that I sold this week, because it gives me the ability yeah. to do all this other stuff. So you don't necessarily have to be passionate about what you're doing on a daily basis, but you can be passionate about what it gives you the ability to do. Uh, and I think that's super, super important. Well, that's quite, that is, well, amazing, really, because I'm, I never really looked at you see, so we've always been told, like, what, what's your passion? You know, your purpose is your passion. But, but to make the distinction, to distinguish, you know, your gifting and your passion, you know, we, we're kind of following a passion being your desire. Well, I desire, I desire. Yeah. And I must chase what I desire. But if your gifting isn't toward that, and like mm -hmm. you say, you, you're going to be chasing your tail. Yep. Um, 
And you know but what? to also make a way you're like sorry sorry, but to also use your current um occupation as a means to make a way for you financially exactly. to input and chase that gifting. Yeah, you're exactly you know, never right. really said yeah, and I've know, never seen it in that light before. And another word to throw in there that's even more important is the word purpose. Like there's a big difference between passion and purpose. And I think a lot of people become frustrated because they're judging their potential on the wrong purpose. They're judging mm. their potential on the wrong purpose. So like I've got a MacBook sitting in front of me. And if I needed to hammer some nails into this desk, I could smack it with this MacBook, but it's not the MacBook's purpose. And if I judge this MacBook on its ability to hammer a nail, then I'm going to be pretty mm -hmm. frustrated with the results. <laughs> but if I judge the MacBook yeah. on its purpose to do the things that I do on it, well, then that's a whole different story. And so, you know, trying to figure out what your purpose is, it's always going to come from where your gifts lie. It's not going to come from just, just the things that you happen to, I'd be passionate about at that time. There are plenty of things I was passionate about last year that I could care less about this year, <laughs> you know? And mm -hmm. if I would have built a business yeah. around that, I'd be in trouble. Yeah. So that's well, awesome. Well, that's man. really good. Yeah, that, that is to to really pick apart and to take something from this conversation that isn't the usual, you know, something I've never seen before. That's awesome. You know, the, the distinction between passion and gifting and... Because you can be, you can be, you can be deceiving yourself a lot mm. if we're not understanding really what what you possess right now. And I think it's people are kind of they they also say, well, I'm not, I'm not gifted at anything, you know, because we're kind of looking at gifting like, well, singing or playing an instrument, or uh, yep. they're not looking at they, they, they're not understanding gifting. You know, it could be in, it could be diligence, it could be it, it could be well organized. You could, you know, there's a myriad of gifts, you know, that you could possess, but you overlook it because you're looking for the big gifts. Well, exactly. You know, that, that, can, that, can, that can make the big money. And like, well, I'm not gifted, so I just have to succumb to circumstance. You know, you're exactly right. That's why I always tell artists that I'm so envious of them. Because when you see an artist, like when you see a musician that's gifted at the violin, it's so obvious, right? Like it's, it's obvious, yeah. like this guy was born to play the violin. So he's playing the violin, he's incredible, and he's building, building a life around it. Like, it's so, it's so cut and dry, easy. It's not as easy when, you know, you're a business person or you're in sales or you're in, you know, administration or you're in, you know, construction. You know, it's not as easy, um, but it's still the same, it's still the same idea. You know what I mean? Mm. Man, I really appreciate your question, and let's stay in touch because I'd like to, I'd like to continue this conversation with you and um, because, man... <laughs> You are not the only one with this question, and it's probably right. a vast majority of people that are struggling with the exact exact same thing. But I can tell from talking to you, though, that you, you know you mentioned a certain base level of education, but you're a smart guy. Um, like you, right. you have a great understanding of what you're talking about, and I think I think it's going to uh, I think it'll be a great kind of adventure that you're going to go down that path of what are my gifts, and you're going to figure it out. And and I, I definitely want to want to stay in touch and see that happen. Yeah, brilliant. Absolutely. Well, thank you so well, much for calling in. Yeah, and you, I really do appreciate your Absolutely. wisdom and, and vulnerability with that. It's, you know, it's a genuine humility. You're not you're not ashamed to show mm. y your skin, if you know what I mean. Yep. You're not some, some gun ho big shot. I'm, I'm the entrepreneur. <laughs> you're not. You know. Yeah, exactly. No, that's <laughs> so that is. That's, yep. that's kind of what sets you apart from the, the, the thousands of them. I appreciate um, that. That's, I that's, really do. I really do. You know, look forward to seeing what you post and when I can watch Daily Bread. You know, that's and awesome. and just you alone as a, as, as kind of gave me this big question on my life. You know, mm. um, what else? You know, do, like yep. Dean, is this it? You know, what? Yeah. What can you do? You know, and it's and, and I'm not. I'm not the the question behind your voice you know it, it, it hits me no one else you know listen to has kind of just has pricked my heart to kind of just take a second look and listen and think hang on what's this 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 is daily but fresh bread this is something new it's not stale <laughs> so uh, I, mean, that's, I appreciate and, it and that means more to me than you have any idea and and i want to see where that goes so so definitely keep me posted 
Um, and I don't say that as just like a way to get off the phone. I mean that. Like, send me some messages. Keep me, yeah. keep me posted on your progress, and I'd love to interact with you. These conversations are incredible that we're having. It's facebook.com slash Tyler Harris page. Who is this? Brian. It's Brian. Hey, Brian. This is Tyler Harris. How are you, man? Great, Tyler. How are you today? I am fantastic. Where are you Good to hear from where, you. Where, where, where are you located exactly? I am in Lawrenceville right now. You're and... in where? In Lawrenceville, Georgia. Ah, yes. Great little town just outside of Atlanta. Yep. In the northeast corner. Got it. So, so tell me what your question is, my man. So I see you out and about, and I watch your videos, and I comment all the time. Yeah. What drives you more than anything? And I know you were talking about you sell this many life insurance policies a day. Yeah. What really drives you to do that? Is it the money? Is it the recognition? Is it the just the fact that you're able to outdo somebody? Like, what is it that drives you? And what would it be for somebody else that isn't? I mean, I'm not a sales guy and never yep. claim to be and not going to be. I'm an IT guy by, by my chance of my degree and my yep. personal life experience. What what is that ambition like for you? And what could you share with people like me that are not the sales guys that just want to have that same ambition, same drive? What sh what is it? I mean, like, yep. tell me, explain to me. Tell yeah. me a little bit about. Just asking, like, what's the drive? Like, what's the drive to get out there and to perform at a high level? Is it the money? Is it the recognition? Is it the competition? Is it um, what is it that kind of is the ambition behind going out and doing all the stuff that, that we're doing. Um, man, I'll tell you, do you need to answer that? No, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> they can, they I'll, can wait. I'll, I'll tell you, um, it's evolved. Uh, it's evolved. Like three years ago, I would tell you it was 100% the money because I was broke. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I think uh, these things, they evolve over time. Um, and for me, that, that evolution and that transition has gone from it being about me into being about okay. others. Um, okay. And I think that's just, it's a, it's a way bigger topic uh, of just personal responsibility um, mm -hmm. in that once I took, and not only, and, and only until I took that personal responsibility and figured that out, like, okay, yeah, money, at first I was broke and I was in debt. And so first course, yeah. first thing was, okay, got to get out of debt, did that. Next was, okay, now I got to get a substantial amount of money that I can feel comfortable in savings and in investments and things like that. Okay, did that. Mm -hmm. not, in, not until then could I look up and look to my left and right and say, okay, who else can I help? And who else can I um, maybe drive to, to do the, the same thing? Uh, I think that's an important distinction to mention because there's so many people out there that you're seeing online and that we all see online on Instagram and Facebook that, you know, they're, oh, yeah. they're out there, um, you know, selling this idea of, of, you know, success and, you know, zero to six figures in six days and, you know, all these, all oh, yeah. these things. Um, but they haven't really figured it out for themselves. Like that is their means to that end is, is, is the selling of all these things for me. Mm -hmm. It was just having taken that personal responsibility and finally figured my own stuff out. I knew that because of what I went through, that there were so many more people just like me that were in that early stage process. And mm -hmm. if I could come in, having just gone through it, like to where it wasn't 20 years removed, to where it wasn't being read in a, you know, autobiography after I die, to where it was fresh. Yeah. Like fresh, yeah. fresh, not only in that I remember it, but fresh that I remember, like I, I can feel it, <laughs> you know, like I oh, can yeah, feel yeah. what it was like to be, you know, just incredibly um, just depressed because I felt like I was stuck and I wasn't where I was supposed to be at the time where I was supposed to be and, and, and just felt like I, there was no answer. And, you know, I remember what that feels like. And because it's so fresh and because I can remember it, it drives me to put this message out there to help that person that's feeling that right now. Um, mm -hmm. and so that's like, that's what drives me every day. Like the sales side, um, you know, when you're in sales, there, there are sales skills that can be learned. 
and you can become a good yeah. salesperson. People aren't born salespeople. They're not born uh, with that. Like that, all that stuff can be learned. And I learned that stuff along the way to where that's kind of um, just unconscious. It's like just for me, it just it just happens. And so I can't. I don't have to spend that time focusing on that process now. I can spend the time, you know, outside of those meetings in what I can do to give back and what I can do to provide value uh, to other people and know that the sales will take care of themselves. But that being said, I'm an extremely competitive person, uh, extremely yeah. competitive. And I'll just be super transparent here since we're on live on all these different platforms and say that <laughs> over the last month, that has been a struggle of mine, um, is my competitiveness because within our organization, we have contests going on all the time and different um, trips that we're trying to, you know, qualify for and different events that we're trying to qualify for. And there was one that, that the contest period was ending um, uh, here. I think it just it ends this week. It ends this week. And I'm in like third place. And it still <laughs> like wakes me up at night. And I'm it, like the fact that I'm in third place. <laughs> But I also have these other responsibilities that, that are on my plate, which is you know, yeah. the, my corporate side of the job and all. But I'm still in the sales. Like, I'm, I'm still in the field selling every single day. And for the fact that I'm in third place for this particular com competition drives me absolutely crazy. And this concept of, of giving that up because of this other stuff is very, very difficult for me to, um, <laughs> to grasp. And like literally yeah. as I'm saying that, I'm like, like I can feel it in my gut. It's very uncomfortable um, <laughs> because I just hate it. Like I hate the fact, yeah. like I'm just telling you, like I hate the fact that in May there's going to be an award banquet and I will not go up and win that award, even though I know why it's because I'm doing all this other stuff. Like it's still like when that person walks up there, Dirk, I will want to punch him in the face. His name's Dirk and I will want to punch him in the face. Now he's a great friend and I'm happy for him and I'm the one that recruited him into this business because he saw a random Facebook Live I did in the middle of the night, but I still will want to punch him in the face. Um, so I, you know, I think it's just that, uh, that balance. Um, but for me, every single day, it's, it's become all about uh, being able to help others and seeing what this thing can turn into with all the social media stuff that we're doing, like the sales stuff, I will always be able to do that. Uh, but now it's just, it's just legacy. I mean, that word right now for me is so huge is legacy. Um, and just creating a lifestyle, you know, for my family, creating an environment mm -hmm. for my family that's not just comfortable, but that's second to none. Um, yeah. And then helping other people do the same thing. And and I I I mean, shared a, a picture with you. I tied you in yeah. about servant leadership. Yes, and I, I know that. you liked it. And yep. and I wanted to get your thoughts on on that whole topic of servant leadership. Do you feel like that's a very something we should be pushing for as leaders inside of our organization? I think it is. I think it's the only way to lead. I mean, to me. Okay. Because servant yeah. leadership, my definition of servant leadership is just leading by example. Um, mm -hmm. And that's the reason why I'm still so competitive. Like, I'm not a great sales leader as far as the training aspect, because that's just not my set of skills. Uh, my business gotcha. partner, Nathan Wells, who right now is two offices over there, over from me training somebody right now. Like, that's his skill set. He can train like no other, and he enjoys that process and teaching someone and then watching them go do it. That's just not, that's just not my, that's just not me. I mm -hmm. can be a sales leader, though, by showing them what's possible and by going out and executing on what they're supposed to be doing on a daily basis. Like, I don't want to ever tell somebody to go do something that I didn't do this week. Um, yeah. And that's just the way I like uh, to lead. But the, to me, that is servant leadership because the best way, the best possible way I can serve the other people on my team is by showing them exactly what to do by actually doing it. <laughs> Mm -hmm. No, um, you're absolutely right. So, like, I, I think it's, right. I think it's unbelievably uh, important. And but, it, but when you look at like an executive level type leadership, uh, I think mm -hmm. it's so easy to to find the servant leaders because the servant leaders are one. Back to where we first started this conversation, they're those ones that have taken that personal responsibility and that they have taken care of themselves. So they've got that like on lockdown. They're like, I'm good now. How can yeah. I go help? you know, Joe, how can I go help Brian? How can I go help TJ? 
um, succeed in their life because helping them succeed in their life and helping them get what they want was that the old Jim Rohn probably. Um, oh yeah. People get what they want. Classic. Get everything you're wanting. Classic Jim Rohn. But like you can sense that in people. Like the owner, the CEO of our company, you can 100% sense it that from the first day I met him to the second ago in our in our leadership meeting we had this afternoon during lunch. You know that he is more concerned with my well-being than his own. At least it feels that way. I mean, there's <laughs> obviously there's the necessity of of um, caring for oneself, but you can tell that he is 100% focused on me when he's talking to me, TJ when he's talking to mm. TJ, Caitlin when he's talking to Caitlin, and is vested has that vested interest in them, and that has nothing to do with him. Like he'll he'll have situations where what he's telling that person is actually not good for him. And that mean that may mean that they need to go do something else. And Gary Vaynerchuk's another incredible example of servant leadership. Like he'll tell mm -hmm. people like, look, Absolutely. like I don't think you need to work here. I think you need to go explore this thing that you're obviously um, interested in and you need to go, um, he calls it taste. You need to taste, taste. I think you need to go taste those things and then if you want to come back, come back. But if not, you know, not like being willing to tell someone that like, hey, we want people that are just living on fire and that are excited to wake up every morning and do what they're doing, whether that's with us or whether that's somewhere else. Like it's just, you know, having genuine, mm. you know, interest in that individual, um, man, it's, it's huge. And that's what a servant leader, like you can, you can pick those apart uh, from a cloudy oh, yeah. day. So, absolutely yeah, man. i'm absolutely. glad we finally got to talk i know we've been kind of connecting back and forth and uh, yeah. a lot over the last year probably yeah pro and that's one thing i was thinking about i'm like man i've taught this guy off and on for almost <laughs> probably six months to a year yeah. and he's always in atlanta i'm <laughs> almost 30 minutes away from atlanta yeah. didn't give him time and i've never seen this man one time but that's that's a that's the cool thing about Atlanta, and that's one thing that's kind of yeah. drawn me to the city. I've enjoyed every second of it. So, awesome. well, man, thank you for yeah. uh, putting the question up there, and I'm, I uh, thank you for engaging with everything. It means the world to me, and I uh, hope you have a good rest of your Thursday, man. Thank you, Tyler. I All appreciate right. it, man. Yes, sir. Have a great day. You too, bud. All right, our last I just realized, guys, by the way, <laughs> when my pant leg just went up. For those of you that can't see, I've got on ice. Iced tea socks on right now, <laughs> and it's just iced teas. Not iced tea like the that's drink, easy. but the wrapper. Oh, that is Easy E. You're right. Oh, I didn't even. That's bad. It's Easy E socks on right now. But anyways. Hello. Hey, this is Tyler Harris. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Good. I have, I have enjoyed. Uh, I've enjoyed your like comments minutes, lately. So. I've been seeing them a bunch. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I follow you quite a bit. That's awesome. Uh, I love. I love everything that you do. Hey, so did you have a question for me? Yeah, so my question is, how do you, if you're like not in the right mindset, like almost confidence wise, like okay. your ambitions aren't necessarily matching your actions because you don't have the confidence to necessarily do the things you want to do. Okay. Um, how, like, how do you get into that mindset where like nothing, like you don't care what people think, you're not you know, concerned about your parents or your friends or your, fa you know, like where it's just you and the mindset of you doing it. You know, I, I kind of struggle with, you know, you know, your friends will kind of make little comments yeah. or, um, you know, like people judging you because, you know, you're, you're, you have an ambition to do something, yeah. but, then it, but when they say those things that kind of pulls your confidence level down Absolutely. and then you're not doing, you're not taking the right steps to match your ambitions because your confidence isn't necessarily matching what you want to do. Got it. And I'm going to repeat your questions so that people on Instagram can hear it. It was, it was basically, how do you, how do you have the ability to go and not care what other people think and have the confidence to, to go all in. Um, and when those people say certain things or make fun of you or poke fun and have it not take your confidence down to a level where it takes you out. Um, and, and doesn't, uh, where you don't continue on the path that you're on, like, how do you have the, the confidence to do so? Um, and, and this is such an important question. Um, it really is. And like everything that you just mentioned, uh, I've 
been through recently and still go through. Um, I mean, when I started putting this stuff out on social media, I, I, there wasn't many people that didn't make fun of me. <laughs> the, the ratio of making fun versus not making fun was not pleasant. Um, and, and justifiably so, like I get it. Like I, I 100% get it. Anytime you're trying to do something significant, um, it's gonna make people uncomfortable. Um, and that's probably the first thing that I would tell you is that if you're getting that type of feedback from people, that it probably means you're onto something. It probably means that you're doing something important. And so that's kind of one of those good indicators. Um, but I think, you know, Gary V says this a lot, like don't care what other people think. And it's just a lie. Like you're never gonna not care what other people think. You're always gonna care. Uh, I think the big thing is, is just not letting what other people say and what other people do affect your actions. Like you're gonna feel it. Like it's not, it's not great when, when someone says something that's hurtful or that says something that, you know, makes you question things, but it's just not letting it impact what you actually do moving forward. Um, Ryan Mickler, uh, recently we did the, the daily bread vlog, uh, with him on the breadwinner podcast. And he mentioned that, you know, you don't have to care what everybody thinks. He said, but you know, you want to care what certain people think. <laughs> like you mentioned, like yeah, he cares yeah. like what his wife thinks and what his kids think. Yeah. Um, and what yeah. certain mentors and certain people that he has in his life, uh, life thinks. And I think that's, you know, certainly one way of looking at it, but still to say that that random friend that you went to high school with that you don't even talk to anymore and they post a comment or you hear through the grapevine that they said something about you, it's impossible for that not to affect you, um, as far as, you know, make you feel a certain way. I think when you are laser focused on what you're trying to do and the impact that it's going to make and, and when that's locked tight and that's strong and that's the only way you're going to be able to push through when those things are happening so i think it's you know staying focused on the end goal you know where whatever that is like five years from now ten years from now like if everything happens perfectly and if everything is a great success what does it look like in ten years and to be able to have that vision and that picture in your head all the time so that when you do hear those things, like, yeah, it's going to affect you. But then you think back again, okay, 10 years from now, if I keep plugging away, like this is yeah. where I'm headed, uh, can help. But I say that, and, and I can tell you just honestly that I look back when I first started putting this stuff online and when I did start getting a ton of that negative feedback and that kind of who is this guy and who does he think he is and what is he trying to do and this is silly or this, you know, he thinks he's full of himself and all these things these preconceived ideas that people had that didn't really know what I was doing. I often look back and I'm just like, man, I don't know. Like, I don't know what kept me um, pushing through and what kept me doing it other than the fact that I just had this gut feeling that it would turn into something impactful. Like I just, I just knew. Uh, I don't, I can't put my finger on it. I can't tell you it was like a certain thing I said to myself each time it happened. It, I don't know. But what Were I. Were there certain people, right? Like, did you have certain people around you, though, that maybe helped you through all that? Because I also struggle with finding like connections with, yes with people no. that have the same mindset. You yes know, it's hard to just connect with somebody random if, you know what I mean? Like, I, if you're I, not around, I understand, people, I understand exactly what you mean. Um, and I think yes and no. Like, um, my business partners didn't didn't understand. Uh, they do now, but it's 14 months later. Uh, they didn't understand at the beginning. Um, and I can understand that from their perspective because any time I was spending on this was time that was taking me away from the business. Uh, my my wife didn't understand. My parents yeah, didn't yeah. understand. My sister didn't understand. My best, best friends didn't understand. Um, I think a lot of that is what you're doing, you know, right now and in, in reaching out to people, um, that are doing it or that have, you know, maybe been through that before and feeding off of their content. Like I, I, I consumed every piece of Gary Vaynerchuk's content that existed probably multiple times. Yeah. Um, but oh, it was, yeah. it, it yeah. was from that and from hearing him say these things over and over and over that I believed myself as well, um, that I could just hang on the fact that like, okay, like he's saying it, he's living it, he's doing it like, okay. You know, I just need to keep pushing, keep pushing, keep pushing. Um, I mean, 
it, it sounds funny to say, but like it's called self confidence for a reason, right? Like it's yeah, got to come yeah. from yourself. Like no one can give you that confidence um, or take it away from you. Like you have to allow them to take it away uh, from you. Um, and so I think it's just auditing what you're allowing in. And there may be people that you just need to quit hanging around with. Um, yeah, no, def- well, no, I have done that. And yeah. it's, it's kind of, you know, it's tough though. Cause you want to, um, you still want to like have friends, right? Like yeah. you still want to have people you can talk to. And, yeah. Um, so, but you no, know, that like what you just said, everything you said was just, well, you know, it's exactly what I've been thinking, but it's, you know, it's hard if you're not like, if you're thinking it, but no one else and there's, is like, and there's, <laughs> like, there's a balance like, too. Like I, I'm, I'm the biggest one to talk about the lack of balance. Um, but, or the fact that there's, there's, there's no such thing as balance, but there is a balance there. Like I have not done a great job at staying in touch with my friends. Um, and it was nothing, it's not like what I just said to you, like there may be some people you need to get rid of. Like all of my friends did not need to be getting, gotten rid of. <laughs> None of them yeah, did yeah, really. Yeah. Like, you know, you know, there may be one or two here or there, um, but I pretty much alienated myself from all of them. And, and, it's, um, and it's cost me um, because I don't really ever hang out with any friends anymore other than the friends that I have that I do business with. Um, and that's not good, that's not great. Um, yeah, I know. I'm feeling that too. Yeah. Like just staying because I work. Um, I work second shift. Yep. So from three to two o'clock in the morning, mm-hmm. I'm working, and then I wake up at like nine, and you know I go right to work. You know I go you know into my um my laser focus tunnel vision yep. uh, side work that I do. Um, you know, and I don't have time necessarily to hang out with people. Or I do have the time, but I'm I'm focused on other things. But and I think uh, and but, I think you though, like you can be the judge of that. Like no one can judge you for that. Uh, I think you have to be the judge of that in your happiness. Like if you're doing that and you're happy, great. If you need to hang out with friends every now and then, then great. Like I don't think anybody else can give someone advice on what their certain. Um, Level of hustle. Well, the, what yeah. their yeah, what their what their uh, equation for happiness should be. You know, like yeah, mine yeah. is very different than yours. It's very different than every person that's standing you know near me right now. Um, but I think it has to be. You, know, you have to audit it frequently. You have to kind of take a step back and be like, okay, am I happy? Yeah. Well, then keep doing what you're doing. You know, like keep keep grinding it out. Okay. And, and that's the that's the importance though about aligning yourself to where you know what you're doing is what you're supposed to be doing. Because if what you're doing as far as work wise, that's taking up so much time, if like, you know, that's part of your purpose. And if you know that, that it's going to create something impactful and you know, like then, then, you know, and, and it's worth, you know, everything's, there's going to be a risk and there's going to be sacrifice in anything that's significant. You just have to make sure that, you know, you're not sacrificing for something that, you know, is not what you're supposed to be doing. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Because then, you know, they say that, what is it, um, success without uh, fulfillment? What is it, success without... Um, success without fulfillment is the ultimate form of failure. Yeah, success without fulfillment is the ultimate form of failure. Um, but I would say failure without fulfillment is probably even worse. <laughs> you know, yeah, I mean, yeah. so yeah, yeah, like you're so, working so hard and yeah, it doesn't work out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I mean, um, yeah, that makes yeah, you don't want you don't want to alienate yourself to a point where you can't go back. Like people usually yeah. people usually get it too. Like you know, friends. Like I know friends of mine. Like you're not burning bridges. You're just focused on other things right now. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, yeah, no, and um, I never like I didn't grow like I always kept my circle pretty small anyway. Even as uh like a teenager and young, like when I was younger, I had a couple of good friends. So like I'm not really necessarily worried about burning bridges. Um, yeah, yeah. But I don't know. Yeah, just but lonely. I like everything you just said. Though, like, like I'm so happy that um you actually called me and you yeah. got to answer my question. No, absolutely. And we got the chat. Yeah, absolutely. Like, it's everything important. Everything you're I mean, saying you're... is like. It's so important. I mean, it's, it's, you're talking about, gold. yeah, I mean, you're talking about happiness. I mean, you're talking about, I mean, it's lonely. Like, like the road to, yeah. the road to success is extremely lonely. Like I, like, yeah, yeah. like 
I love how I can say something like 238 nights in a hotel last year and like people just kind of like, huh, it's just kind of like, <laughs> huh, that's a cool thing to say. But like people don't realize how yeah, yeah. miserable 238 yeah. nights in a hotel room is. And I'm not staying at like the Ritz Carlton, <laughs> you know, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. like, I mean, this is not like uh, lifestyle, the rich and famous 238 nights in a hotel. <laughs> this is like, this is like the just, dirt. yeah, the dirt yeah. is exactly what I was about to say, the dirt, like it's, 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 but again, like if the light at the end of the tunnel is, uh, is something significant and something great, then it makes it tolerable and it not yeah. only tolerable, but it, like when you're, when you're doing something that, you aligned. know, yeah, it's just aligned, it's aligned and you know that there is uh, a purpose for it. And, um, and that's really all we can, all we can ask for. And so that's just what you gotta, you gotta focus on. Like you gotta get that picture in your head, like that picture of everything succeeding 100% what it looks like and be able to call upon that picture like in an instant like like something happens bad boom picture it something happens bad boom picture it and then just know yeah. that if you keep on pushing that um, you know, it'll happen so I'm glad we were able yeah, to have this awesome. conversation this is awesome yeah me yeah I'm so happy yeah, yeah. me too it's, Very cool. I've been following you for uh I don't know. I see actually like on a Facebook ad, it's like how I found you. Oh, that's awesome. And I actually scrolled past like the first time. So I was like, oh, who's this guy? <laughs> and then like you came, kept com coming up, coming up. All right. And then I got, you must have had like a video yeah. or something. And I, yeah. you know, watched it. You know that's what I mean? Awesome. So, well, that, and, and uh, I appreciate you saying that because it means so much to me because I mean, those ads cost money. And there's, I mean, yeah. as you, as you know, like we don't bring any revenue from this. And so like, that's money that could be spent on a vacation this weekend with my family. <laughs> but the fact yeah. that, but the fact that it got you to not scroll by that 12th time and got you to actually <laughs> click on it. And now we're having this conversation and now everything is aligned and, and what I'm trying to do, and then maybe impact what you're trying to do. Like that's, that is the ROI for me. And I, I don't, yeah, like I don't think me. people really understand that. Like, just like you just gave the most practical example of scaling. Like we talk about this idea of scaling impact. Like that's it. Like that is the example. Like money that was spent well, on a Facebook ad that, where do you live again? I live in New Hampshire. New Hampshire. So a fa money that was spent on a Facebook ad that happened to pop up from someone that was scrolling on Facebook in New Hampshire that didn't see the first ad or didn't click on the second ad third ad was uninterested fourth ad you know was like who is this guy i think he is fifth ad was like okay this is getting annoying because he's showing up everywhere and then finally that <laughs> tenth ad or whatever it was that you clicked on enabled us to have this conversation and i mean that's the power of all this stuff and that's the power of just putting good stuff out and then good things happening in return like that's that's like i mean that's the best example i can possibly give and I'm so glad you were the last question because that's the best way that we could possibly end this uh, this Q and A. So, I really, really appreciate you asking the question and jumping on and being vulnerable and, and all that good stuff. And I appreciate you following too. So I, I appreciate you so much. Thank awesome. you for everything you do. Yeah, absolutely. And hope you have a good shift today. <laughs> <laughs> Night shift grind. Yes, all right. that's awesome. All right, have a good day. You too. All right, bye. bye. Okay. <laughs> All right, guys, thank you so much for watching episode 60 of the Sales Wolves podcast live Q&A. We're going to be doing a lot more of this because as you just saw, if you've gotten to this point, those were some impactful conversations um, and some just great valuable lessons uh, that I think we all uh, can learn from. So with that, I am Tyler Harris. I am your host and I am a sales wolf. Ow! <laughs>